Hello, my name is Mickey McCord. Welcome to today's safety training session. Safety is a top priority to your employer and they want you to be safe at work. When you start thinking about safety on a daily basis and following the safety rules laid out by your management team, you will dramatically reduce your chance of being in an accident at work and you don't want to be in an accident. Accidents usually involve injuries, pain and suffering. Pain isn't fun, being injured isn't fun, suffering isn't fun. Accidents are expensive. They cost you because you may not be able to work and you'll have medical costs to pay even if you have insurance. Accidents also cost the golf course in lost productivity, medical expenses, and higher insurance premiums. If you get hurt and miss work, someone on the crew has to step up to do the job that you should be doing. So accidents are a bad thing in a lot of different ways. The best way to avoid accidents is to follow good safety practices from the moment you get to work every day. So let's learn how to work safely and avoid mistakes that turn into accidents that cost money and cause pain and suffering. Back injuries are the nation's number one workplace safety problem. According to Bureau of Labor Statistics, more than one million workers suffer back injuries each year. That's almost one-fourth of all workplace injuries. It is estimated that 80% of workers will have a back injury in their lifetime. Back injuries come in all shapes and sizes. They can range from a minor ache to very painful and become a lifelong disability. Back injuries can be expensive to diagnose and difficult to treat. Sometimes you know immediately you've strained your back, but other times you may not experience pain until much later. When you know how the back works, you can understand why so many people have back problems. The small bones that make up your spine are called vertebrae and are separated by soft spongy cushions called discs. The spine has a distinctive shape with three curves. This unique shape and construction gives the back its ability to support the body and allows you to stand upright, sit, and bend. Your spine serves not only to help you sit or stand upright, but also to protect your spinal cord. Your spinal cord is the main information highway for your entire body and is composed of millions of nerves. There are also muscles and ligaments attached to the lower back that lend support and provide movement. Back pain occurs when any of these back parts are strained or injured. Okay, time to take a break and hammer home an important point. What is the number one workplace safety problem? Back injuries. Remember, 80% of workers will have a back injury in their lifetime. Standing, sitting, or lying down incorrectly will put strain on your spine. Posture is also important when sitting and operating a mower or utility vehicle. Your spine is designed to operate best when it is in a natural S shape. Bending this natural S out of shape for long periods of time can lead to muscle fatigue and back pain. Hold it right there. Everyone, please stand up. Go ahead, stand up. Let's practice good posture. Are you standing? Okay, let's try it. Don't exaggerate the instructions, but hold your head up high and neck straight. Shoulders back, chest out. Tuck your chin just a little. Tighten your abs. Get those feet directly below your hips. Not too close together, just about 12 inches apart. Take a nice, slow, deep breath feels good, doesn't it? What are some of the causes of back pain? The main one that you can control is your overall condition. If you are out of shape and carrying extra pounds, your back has to work harder and is under constant stress. This continual strain on your back can lead to back pain.
tight and knotted muscles which are caused by tension and stress can cause muscle spasms and back pain. You know what they say about getting older. It's better than the alternative. But as we get older, the muscles in our backs naturally get weaker and lose the ability to do heavy lifting. When a disc slides out of place, it loses its ability to cushion and puts pressure on nerves. Osteoarthritis is the most common form of arthritis. It's called the wear and tear arthritis and results from long-term wear and tear on joints and bone or on the long-term effect of an injury. If you've ever been in a car accident or other serious collision, you may know how painful back impact trauma can be. Impact trauma can be the result of a hard fall, being struck by a moving piece of equipment, being in an automobile accident, or on the golf course running a utility vehicle into something at high speed. Working in an awkward position or lifting incorrectly over a period of time can cause what are known as cumulative trauma disorders. As you repeat an unhealthy position or movement, small injuries begin to add up. If you do not change how or what you are doing, more serious injuries can occur. Changing cups can be an example of this kind of back stress. Other jobs we do on the golf course also fall into this category. String trimming for long periods of time can cause back strain. Keep the machine close to your body and avoid reaching with it. What about shoveling or pushing plugs when air frying greens? Do they put stress on your back? Although there is no conclusive scientific evidence that they prevent back injuries, you may feel more comfortable wearing a back support belt when doing some of these jobs that can result in repetitive trauma. Alright, sit up straight. Let's review an important point. What is the first thing to remember, and a good habit to get into, to maintaining a healthy back and avoid back injuries. Good posture. If you need to move a pallet of fertilizer, you will probably get a loader with forks rather than move one bag at a time. However, there are times when you may need to lift, adjust, or carry a heavy object. Or maybe that pallet of fertilizer needs to be loaded one bag at a time into a utility vehicle. In these cases, it's important to lift properly or you might strain or injure your back. A little planning before lifting a heavy object could make the difference in a safe injury-free lift and a back injury. Some things to consider are, how far will you have to carry the load? Next, check the route. Are there obstacles you will have to step over or move? you have to go through a door. If it's closed, ask someone to hold it open for you or wedge it open. Consider if the package is small enough to see over it so you can see where you're going or is your vision obstructed. Do you have to carry the entire load at once or can it be broken down into smaller more manageable loads? Before you lift, take a minute to size up the load. Test the weight by lifting a corner of the object or give it a push to see how easily it moves. If it's too heavy or if the object is an odd shape, stop. Okay, you've checked the weight of the object and you know the route is clear. What else can you do to save your back from too much strain? Ask for help. Two or three people lifting an object is much safer than trying to do it yourself. Don't lift and carry something if there's an easier way. Can you use a hand truck, a cart, or a pallet jack? A pair of gloves may improve your grip and protect your hands when you set the object down. 
Finally, don't be a hero. Never lift anything unless you are sure you can do so safely. Everyone knows this rule. If I asked you at the beginning of the class what's the best way to lift heavy objects, almost everyone would say use your legs not your back. But do you put it into practice? I said earlier that your back's unique shape and construction allows you to bend. But your back is strongest and provides the best support for your body in its upright curved S shape. When you bend over and take it out of the S, it is weaker and more susceptible to injury. Simply put, there is a right and wrong way to lift things. Lifting the wrong way can lead to painful back injuries. Here are some more rules to follow for heavy lifting. Stand close to the object with your feet squarely under your body. Squat down like a professional weightlifter, bending your knees. Keep your back straight or slightly arched. You want your legs to do the lifting, not your back. Keep your head up, eyes looking forward. Do not twist from the hips while lifting. This is a common movement when moving a bag of fertilizer from a pallet to the bed of a truckster that can put a great deal of strain on your back. Okay, we've covered a couple of important points. Let's review them. There are two important rules when lifting heavy objects. Do you remember them? First, keep your back straight, don't bend over, and lift with your legs, not your back. Proper lifting techniques apply while you are carrying a load also. Always keep your back straight. Walk slowly and carefully. Don't twist your back, use your feet to change direction. Avoid leaning over and bending from the waist. Keep the load close to you. This comes naturally while carrying a box, but think about the string tremor. It applies here also. Avoid lifting heavy loads over your head. If you become tired, listen to your body. Set the load down and take a break. Rules for lifting apply when you're setting the load down, too. Position yourself where you want to set the object. Squat down, bending your legs, not your back. And straight down. Don't twist your body. Keep your head up. Finally, be careful when you release your grip. Don't drop it. And we've all had that situation when someone is helping you and you're not sure who's going to let go first. Communicate so you don't leave the other person holding the entire load. It's time to show what you've learned with this review quiz. Answer true or false to the following questions. Back injuries are considered the number one workplace safety problem. There is no reason to worry about small things that you do often. You should assess the situation before attempting to lift a heavy object. Keep your legs straight and bend over to pick up a heavy load. Do not twist your body while picking up or setting down a heavy object. Congratulations, you've completed the back safety and proper lifting training. If you follow these lifting principles, you will greatly reduce your chance of straining and injuring your back.